Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my first uh, impressions review for Komi-san Can't Communicate. So this is a series that is on Netflix, and I wanted to check out, and finally got around to at least checking out the first episode of. Um, and I'm going to say right off the bat, this is a series I am watching on my own time, and I very much, after watching the first episode, stand by that. Um, this won't be a reaction series. It's just something I want to experience as I go. That way I can watch as many episodes or as few episodes as I want in whatever time frame that I want. <laughs> I don't have to worry about sticking to a schedule or anything. Plus, I just feel after watching this first episode that this is a series that I would rather see on my own. That I would rather just lay back and relax too, like at the end of the night and everything. Something like that. But, uh, so what is Komi-san Can't Communicate about? Well, we have this main character, I believe his name is Tamado? Uh, or something like that? Um, he's just entered this private high school, uh, this prep school, and he's he, he just wants to kind of skate through it. He, he doesn't want to draw attention. He doesn't want to have, like, some big high school experience. <laughs> he just wants to skate through it. But he ends up meeting on his first day there uh, Shoko Komi, who is the prettiest girl in school. She's canonically, stunningly beautiful. She is beloved by all. Everyone is talking about her. Everyone is simping over her. The only thing is, she doesn't seem to speak. And we soon find out that the reason for this is that she has crippling social anxiety. It's not to the point where she can't be in public. It's not like it's that bad, but she cannot talk to people. Not just will not, cannot. Uh, it, 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 it legitimately terrifies her to even try. Um, so most of the time she communicates through writing things down, such as when the class are introducing themselves, um, she goes up to the board, writes her name on the board, and runs back to her seat without saying a word. Um, our main character realizes this and tries to start a conversation. He brings up the fact that she can't speak. And even comes up with the idea of, like, talking through writing. They actually hold this conversation with each other through writing everything down. And he finds out that her goal in her high school life is to make 100 friends. And so he tells her just flat out that it's like, well, I'm your first, so let's aim for the other 99. And... This series, at least this first episode, is super saccharine. Like, it's so sweet. It's so heartwarming, so just lovable. Um, our main character, Tamado, is... He's he's okay. He's, he's kind of one of those main characters in an anime who's, like... Yeah, obviously the main female character is more of, like the one everyone cares about, but the main character is just there to kind of, like, you know, be the straight man to the main female character. It's the same thing with, like, Kakegurui. Like, you have the main character of Kakegurui, who I don't even remember the name of. That should tell you a lot. Um, but then you have Yumiko Jabami, who is, let's be honest, she's the real draw for the series in terms of our main characters. Her as the main female lead is, she's much more interesting, much more just like, gripping as a main character than the actual technical main main character is. And, and the same thing is kind of here. Komi is instantly likable. Like, through her constant, like, just fear of speaking up and everything, but you also see through her personality as she speaks through writing on the chalkboard and everything to Tamado. And it's... It's really cute because it's, it's made very clear that she wants friends, that she wants to be able to communicate with people, but 
it's such a crushing weight on her to be doing so that it just legitimately sh she can't do it a and that's probably going to be a main thing with this series her gaining the strength and gaining the courage to be able to start communicating with people um so another thing to note with this is that it very much touches and respectfully handles the issue of like except excessive social anxiety like the episode actually makes a point of saying to its audience like this is a real thing people go through this and it's very serious and it's not that these pe that people who suffer under this don't want friends it's just that they are so crushingly just afraid to talk to people and it, like the sh again the show actually blatantly comes out and says that this is a thing that this is real and it needs to be respectfully handled and talked about and that is so important it is so beautiful to see this series doing that it's like any kind of series that actively and respectfully takes on issues of mental health it's it's kind of a mental health issue in, in its own right it's really cool to see them tackle that in such a very respectful way um and yeah sometimes comey's um shyness and timidness and everything can be kind of played for a little bit of a joke but it's very much respected and tomato very much like he he very much sees her as a real person and doesn't see her as someone to make fun of or anything um and unlike everybody else in the school, even, it seems, he doesn't see her as an object of desire either. Like, she, again, as I said, she's canonically stunningly beautiful. That is like a canon character trait of hers, a physical character trait. She is stunningly beautiful. And everybody in this school is simping over her. So much to the point that at one point in the episode, Tomato is actually knocked out by this dude just running past him to get to her. And when he sits next to her in class, everybody just starts, like, glaring at him because he had the nerve to sit next to her when they wanted to. And it's just, like, it, it's it's kind of silly stuff like that. Um, it, It's definitely played up for the joke, for the idea of, like, oh, she's that beautiful that everyone is just obsessed with her but he treats her like a person he treats her as someone who deserves respect and deserves to be looked at like you know like a real actual human being rather than just an object of desire and that's important and i think that's what makes their friendship that starts to bloom uh, by the end of this episode great and believable it's just one of those cases where it's like, yeah, this person is looking at me in a way that no one else does and in, in a way that I want someone to look at me. It's a, And this has been seen in other media, too. Um, there's one specifically I'm thinking of. I can't remember what it is exactly. It's like just it's at the edge of my mind. Um where it's like this character was like glad oh ruby it was ruby duh because it was pira and jean um it, it's just like in that how pira became so close to jean because he didn't treat her like this idol he everyone else saw her as like this great idol who was just so perfect because she was like such a huge name and everything and jean didn't even know who she was so he treated her like he treats everyone like a person and that's what endeared him to her that's how they became so close and so it's the same kind of deal here just with a different situation um and we also find out that apparently this school is like a beacon for weirdos like apparently the administration actively when 
reviewing applications and interviews to get in because again it is a prep school they apparently only let in people who are unique who are weird who are strange who are different um so everyone in this is like a fucking weirdo and i kind of love that because it's also like with that probably going to shed some light on you know your non-typical kinds of kids um students who weren't always like the best or the brightest or the just normal people and and, and uh as someone who was like that in school it's like yeah i appreciate that now obviously they're going to take it to some extremes like there's a kid in the in the first episode here who's just in full ninja garb throwing uh throwing protractors uh as like a ninja tool and it's like the fuck and apparently um i i watched um your boy roshi's uh reaction to the first episode too and they pointed out there was a girl in uh full-on armor that i didn't notice when i watched so it's like that's that's fun <laughs> um but yeah i'm expecting stuff like that where it's like these people are just different they're just weird they're just eccentric and that's fine and I want to see how they become friends with Comey and everything. and Because that's clearly what it's going for. It's going to be like, oh, we're going to meet all these people. And we're going to bring them into this friend group that's going to continue to grow and grow. And obviously reaching 100 is going to be a lot. <laughs> so I doubt it would be done within this season. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting for sure. Um, it's going to be a fun ride. Um, and I, I think part of the reason I did like it so much is the relatability. Because for me, growing up, um, going throughout high school and stuff, I was very much the same way. I had very bad social anxiety. Not to the point where I couldn't talk to people. If someone, like, talked to me or whatnot, I, I could definitely hold a conversation. But I usually never started conversations. I always sat alone at lunch. Um, I almost never just talk to people on an average regular basis i didn't join in on a lot of uh a lot of like events or whatnot i i basically had to be asked every time there was a group project to join in just because it's like i didn't want to <laughs> um I, I i was very socially anxious at that time um and that would I only really began to get better thanks to doing YouTube and going to conventions and stuff. That kind of stuff actually helped me come out of my shell a lot. Um, but yeah, at the time I was very, very socially anxious. I, I had like a few friends and stuff from like church and whatnot at that time, but that was pretty much it. Um, I, I was never a really sociable person. I was always very shy, very quiet. So, so even though I was never as extreme as Comey, I definitely connected with a lot of it, with a lot of the fears, with a lot of the just feelings about it. Because you see at a point, like, she's writing on the board and she's writing out, like, her fears about, like, what happens if she speaks up and everything. And it's like, it's like, okay, I say, so, I, I say something, what then? What happens next? What do I say next? What do they say? And everything. It's like, yeah, that that's kind of the same kind of thought process as that would go through my head it's like what if i say something wrong accidentally and i, I fuck everything up and it's like yeah <laughs> i get it i very much understand um it's just it's one of those that just i i really like for that reason and of course i have to mention the comey face there, there are certain anime and whatnot out there that have that are like known for certain expressions and whatnot. Uh, the biggest example would probably be Higarashi no Naku Koroni, which is known for the Higarashi face, the crazy psychotic expressions made by the characters when they, well, they go crazy, <laughs> when they suffer suffer under the Hinamazawa syndrome and all. So this series does the same thing and it's one of the things that actually made me want to see it because i'd seen the screen caps and everything of comey with this like adorable 
blank expression on her face like it's her her nose and mouth just kind of disappear her eyes are big and wide and cutesy and it's like it's it's shown in the episode that it's kind of supposed to be her being extremely nervous or timid and whatnot um it's it's kind of like an expression of her just not knowing how to react or what to do in that situation but it's so damn cute it is just an adorable expression it's it's one of those facial expressions that are clearly spe special for this anime that really just gets people invested it, it, again just like the higurashi face it's it's just something that it, it's just something that hooks you in because it's so unique it's so much its own thing that it comes across as something wholly special for the series um and i'm excited to see like if other characters in this will have similar things going on that just make them really stand out as well um like i said though i've only seen the first episode so far uh but i really enjoyed it there's a, a good portion of the episode is them just talking via writing on the chalkboard not much of anything else is happening there's not even much like background music at all excuse me and it's it, it's it, it, it kind of reminds me of that episode in re-zero where most of the episode is just rem and subaru talking and everything uh where they're just communicating with each other about everything that had been going on and about subaru's mindset and his his struggles and everything and about how Rem sees him. Um, it kind of reminds me of that, just a little more light and fluffy, because, you know, obviously the ReZero one had a lot more pain and heaviness to it. But still, it, it kind of reminds me of that, because it's just a conversation. And it's super sweet, it's super cute, it's just... It, 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 it sucks you in. Like, even though it's just a conversation, again, almost no music happening, almost nothing of any note going on, just them communicating, it sucks you in. Because at this point, you're invested in this character's struggles, you're invested in her concerns, her, her, her hardships, and so you're seeing them open up to each other in such a beautiful way that it just, it kind of gets your heart moving, you know? And a good portion of this episode is just that. And there's even a part where it's just some light music playing while it's showing kind of like a montage of them communicating, and it's it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's like we need more moments like that in anime, just these silent or soft, quiet, retrospective moments where the characters can just talk to each other. Not much else actually going on, just communication. And I think I feel like this series is going to have quite a bit of that, concern, considering you know what the series is about and <laughs> what the title is and everything. Um, but yeah, I I really enjoyed this first episode. But like I said, I am going to be watching it on my own time. I, I think this is something that I want to just lay back and relax to. Something I want to enjoy without having to worry about like you know getting on camera and everything and you know working up my i just dropped my headphones <laughs> working up my reaction any a uh, little bit because with reactions i do have to do that i do have to actually actively react to things in a way i wouldn't normally so i think i'd rather just have that this as like a nice relaxing show i can just watch on my own time um i think that's the best thing for this kind of series and maybe by the time i finish it i will um maybe by the time i finish it i'll make another review like talking about my overall thoughts or something i don't know we'll see but either way tell me in the comments below what do you think of the first episode of komisan can't communicate and if you haven't seen it, 
and I guess you watch the review because you don't mind spoilers or whatnot, <laughs> um, I would definitely suggest checking it out. It's a great episode. It, like, even with as much as I said in here, it doesn't truly do it justice. You need to see it. Um, but for the meantime, thank you all so much. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time.